Jason, and he did the guest this evening. Right. Um, so my speech today is about Kevin Conroy and the legacy he has left. Uh, these are the sources I used. When you think of an actor, their entire career is not typically defined by one single role. And if it is, it's you know, a legendary, Oscar-worthy performance that everyone talks about. But what if you spent over 30 years portraying one character and got barely any recognition? Mm -hmm. I want to give a little uh, participation. Raise your hand if you've heard of Batman. It's the character that I mentioned. That pretty much lines up. Because in my survey, 100% of people knew who Batman was. But only 40% knew who Kevin Conroy was, despite him portraying the character over 70 times across 32 years. Today, we're going to be discussing Kevin Conroy, known for his iconic portrayal of the character Batman for over 30 years, and examine how his personal past and the profound understanding of the character left a mark on the world of animation and the world as a whole. Now, for why you should listen to me, I'm a huge Batman fan. I've grown up reading the comics, watching the movies. I saw a uh, live in concert in DC last year, and I actually got the opportunity to meet Kevin Conroy a year before his passing in, uh, in 2021. And so I'd like to discuss three things today. I want to talk about how he got the role of the character, his personal life, and how it affected it, and his legacy and impact afterwards. Now to start, we have to go back to the 1980s. In 2020, though, he did an interview with a YouTuber named Crazy Jack that he went into detail about how he got the role and how you know, this all happened. And he talked about how Warner Bros. was looking for an actor for months to portray this character. They interviewed over 500 people, but they couldn't find anybody, so they decided to spread out even more, and that's when he went in for the role. And at the time, his only knowledge of the character was the 60s Adam West Batman movies, which if you know anything about them, they're very goofy, they're, you know, they're meant to be comedies, uh, not like the dark and brooding character that, that most people know. Um, but because he had so limited knowledge, he was not intimidated when these three men were sitting in the room, who were the two leads of Warner Brothers at the time and the creator of Batman, or of the Batman animated series, Bruce Timm. So he went through the interview and, you know, he had to do the role. And it wasn't always easy getting roles, though. Uh, most of what I'm going to talk about in this section is based off the DC Pride comic from 2022 called Finding Batman. Mm -hmm. um, so he started with a small film and theater career, uh, just doing a lot of stage plays, things like that. Um, but due to his sexuality as a gay man, he was denied a lot of roles. Um, he was held out, he got a big break with a major film studio, and when the producers found out that he was gay, they fired him, and then he got, he got fired by his agent because he did not disclose that information to him. Um, and this all was happening right at the height of the AIDS epidemic, and so his career was kind of held back by that. Um, he lost two agents, uh, like two of his representation agents, uh, two AIDS, and he wasn't really cast because of the lack of information. People were afraid that it was contagious to them, so they refused to hire him for a lot of roles, um, even though he never had the disease. Um, and on top of this, he also had a very rocky relationship at home uh, with his brother who suffered from schizophrenia, and he had an alcoholic father, so his home life was just a complete mess. Um, but despite all of those setbacks, he actually utilized this in his performance, saying that these, you know, having to live with a mask on helped him portray the character living two lives, you know, having secrets like that. But this, he didn't just leave an impact on me, he left an impact on multiple generations. The, you know, I, I grew up with my dad who gave me his Batman comics and watched the show with me, and he got them from his dad. And uh, I worked as a uh, summer camp counselor at once, and I got there one day, and there were four different kids wearing Batman shirts saying that he was their role model. I mean, the, his impact is, is profound. Um, and in my survey, I asked how many people watched the Batman animated series growing up, and over 75% of you said yes. 
And I also asked how many of you played the games, and I think, yeah, over 50% said yes. Um, funnily enough, most of the responses were Lego Batman, which is like the one thing he didn't do, uh, just because it's all mumbles and, you know, there's no real acting in that game. Um, but regardless, we're all still familiar with him. Um, unfortunately, he passed away in 2022. Um, he played the character in both live action and animation, which is pretty much unheard of in the, the acting world. Most people don't do that. Um, but he, the creators of the Batwoman TV show uh, said that he was basically like the largest influence on their show and that they felt it was right to give him that recognition. Um, so, just a, a fun story to kind of show how much he has impacted people. I went to GalaxyCon a few years ago, this is when I met him, um, and I was waiting in line to meet him, and I had been waiting there for like two hours, there was like just a few people in front of me, and uh, they said he was going to be going on a break. I'm like, okay. Yeah. So he walks over to uh, another booth, Tara Strong, she's a uh, Harley Quinn. And you know, gives her a hug, and everyone's you know meet each other, and he kneels down to this little kid that was wearing a full-on like Batman suit, and his mom was saying that he didn't have the money to meet him because you have to like pay for autographs and things. And he was like, oh no, it's fine, and he knelt down, you know, hugged him, took a picture. That was just kind of the, the man he was, um, and you know, it it just it really showed how much people cared about him. Um, so. After growing up in an unstable home, watching friends and loved ones and co-workers pass away from a horrible illness at the height of the AIDS epidemic, and stumbling into the role of a lifetime with little to no knowledge, he was truly able to embrace himself and the character and change the trajectory of animation and comics as a whole. And you know, I really hope you guys enjoyed learning about him. There's so much I didn't get to talk about. I mean, having a career of over 30 years uh, I really encourage you to go out and learn more. Um, but I want to end it with a quote from Mark Hamill, who is the actor for Luke Skywalker, but also the Joker for many years, uh, who announced he would no longer be voicing him when Kevin Conroy passed, saying that there is no Joker without the Batman. Mm -hmm. Thank you.